heading for Gatowice. I'm really bad with Polish names. So it's uh, just the first day that the lockdown restrictions have ended in Krakow. <laughs> In the early morning on a spring day in May, me and my friends took a train from Vienna to Krakow in Poland, where we would stay there for two days. After about five hours on the train, we eventually arrived in Krakow to watch the sunset of the castle. So I'm going to give you the history of here because I've been here for, well, just a night really, but we were just wandering the streets and sat by the river and uh, we just basically met up with, uh, we were with Jakob and uh, Lucas, Lucas being Austrian, Jakob being Polish and we met his uh, Polish friend, Julia, who's very nice, he's letting us crash at her place. Well, she's a real estate, well, it doesn't really matter, but um, yeah, the history of Krakow is uh, so interesting. And as you can see around me, it's so historic. I think I'm in the old part of town. And essentially, in the medieval period, it's part of the Kingdom of Poland. And then part of the Grand Duchy, or the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. And then, unfortunately, as goes with Polish history, it got conquered and reconquered and Krakow has fallen into many hands of many different people. The Austrians twice, the Austro-Hungarians twice and the Habsburgs once, uh, the Germans, the Russians, the Soviets, different things. But um, yeah, but now it's also been independent a couple of times, it's been its own independent state, uh, like its own city-state, like the Duchy of Krakow and then obviously part of the uh, independent Polish country so and now here it is free at last <laughs> so Krakow is undoubtedly a very beautiful city it's I think a lot of people tell me it's one it's the most beautiful city in Poland but I think well anyone can tell you a city can be beautiful a city can be great but it's about the people and I think while I'm here I'll consider it a successful trip if I meet some general Krakowians or just Polish people in general and I can talk to them and we can have a good time so let's try and find hopefully some Polskas Polskis Polish people Good evening. Uh, I'm in the south of the city of Krakow right now, in the district of uh, Kazimierz. Um, butchering the pronunciation, but this is how it's spelt. And um, this is where the and this here is uh, the Jewish cemetery, where a lot of the famous uh, Jewish writers are, and there's a synagogue over the wall there. And um, basically, this area is where the Krakow uh, Jewish ghetto was. So when the Nazis invaded Poland in September of 1939. Uh, obviously, you know, they annexed the whole country, uh, half of the country with the long of the Soviet Union. But by March 1941, they started um, moving the Jews into the Krakow ghetto. And this is the district where it was. At the beginning of the war there was about 70,000 Jews living in Krakow and then by the time 1943 came around the liquidation of the ghetto uh, began and so obviously this came from the orders of the Nazi higher-ups that the Jews were to be liquidated in the final solution of course of the Jewish question. So um, by the time that happened there was minuscule amount of Jews left in the city and indeed in Poland 
Warsaw, uh, Graz, uh, Gdansk, everywhere was completely nearly wiped off the face of the earth. Warsaw, especially during the uh, occupation in 1939, Warsaw was completely destroyed. It was near here that we went to the marketplace, and as there were a lot of restaurants, we thought we'd get some Polish local food. And we ended up getting this dish called Zapiakanki. Forgive my pronunciation, but this is what it looked like. So, both Vienna and obviously Krakow and um, Prague, Bratislava, Budapest, all being once owned, owned by the Austro-Hungarian Empire, all have this very nice Baroque architectural feel to it. But what my friend was telling me, what Jakob was telling me was, that as you can see, I don't know if you can see this, but the, the buildings are quite, um, well, they're not as clean as, let's say, Vienna. Um, they're a bit more dirty. And he was saying because back in the day, um, geographically, Krakow is in like a, a, a bowl. And back in the day when they used to heat their buildings with coal, you know, the coal air used to just linger. And uh, so that's why, as you can see, all the buildings have this kind of... Not dirty, but slightly darker style in the same vein as Vienna, kind of. But, uh, so yeah, so apparently at one point when they were using coal, it was one of the dirtiest cities in Europe. But then they switched to electric, but the, the stains remained. So it's uh, just the first day that the lockdown restrictions have ended in Krakow. So you can legally uh, sit outside of restaurants and it's Saturday, so the city is absolutely alive and electric. Let's see what happens. That night, me and my friends were invited to an underground party in Krakow. It was weird because COVID regulations had just been loosened, so it was interesting to see where this would what would happen. Like, comment, share and subscribe, people. Needless to say, the night was a success and it was a nice transition back into normality again, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was wondering if I could uh, play the piano. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm afraid it's not possible because it's only for our students. Okay. Do you have to do you feel that you have to really have to play? Yeah. Okay. Five minutes. Five minutes. That was a good few notes. That was a good few notes. C minor. I'm sorry. No, I put on my I hope I hope you're not in trouble. Just a little bit. David Sanya. David Oh no, I just I just got the woman in trouble. Someone came in and told me off. I told her off playing the piano because of COVID. <laughs> 
I said she was sweet though, she was sweet. Oh, I hope she'll be all right. We then went to St. Mary's Basilica, which is the main church in the center of the city. Outside the church, however, was a political sign-up sheet for a anti-LGBT party. Yeah. Let's just move. Let's just move. This is a video. So that's, you know, it's so cool because like that's literally the place where like, kings used to buy garments for themselves. And now we're here. It's gorgeous. These eggs. Mm -hmm. yeah, well. Ooh, how is it? And then the perfect thing to have on a gloomy, hungover Sunday, a pierogi. I then decided to take a walk away from the rest of the group, just for myself, and wander around and see what I could see in the city. Hello, I'm here in the Basilica of St. Michael here in Krakow and it's absolutely stunning. So I'll try and show you some of the stuff that they've got going on here. Aside from the church being absolutely beautiful, but I've spent a lot of time in churches today, checking them out, it's being Sunday, the holy day. But Poland is a very Catholic country and one thing they do love to show off is grandiose churches, the church designs and the architecture and also you probably may have heard of this guy and if you ever come to Poland you will see him everywhere. There he is. Pope John Paul II. So Pope John Paul II was the elected Pope I think, I, I couldn't tell you when, but I'll write it down here. Mm -hmm. There's the date and he was from Poland and he's such a big deal. Also, he's a very famous Pope Like he's seen as being like the the good Pope one of the last good Popes I mean controversial opinion possibly but I think in the Catholic world he seems a good uh, uh, Representative on, on earth and Here we have like this beautiful Architecture look at that Look at that it's absolutely stunning water fountain and this whole complex is the church and I was just um, I asked a photograph a woman over there and I said why are you sitting here and she goes um, oh I'm singing in the choir so she's going to be singing today and I'd love to see that but there's only about an hour and a half of sunlight left so and I want to see a bit more of the city before I leave tomorrow so, let's see if there's anything knocking about. Oh, hang on. It was also just before mass started that these monks start coming in I took these photos of them and uh, yeah there was just about nearly a hundred monks going into this uh, church this is my final day in Poland thinking about what I was expecting when I was coming from Vienna with my friends I I didn't really have an impression, I think, because I'm from the UK and it's kind of very Western European centric. I kind of thought, okay, well, it's Eastern Europe, but maybe the people, you know, you hear things, people don't smile. Um, uh, people are, you know, a bit weird or something like that. But, you know, coming here, I think coming here with a native speaker as well really helped. Uh, you know, God bless Jakob. But um, I have had the most incredible time, actually. And I didn't realize what they don't tell you about when you hear about Poland and the kind of the politics and the law and justice party and, and the anti-LGBT stuff like we saw today is they don't tell you how also how just stunningly beautiful the places are. And, and yeah, to be fair, the people are pretty beautiful as well. Yeah, 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 I'm not gonna lie. 
but absolutely walking along this river bank here with the city all around me and behind me and springtime it's a beautiful year time to come it was forecast to rain and it's just been sunny every day and even in the rain it's been absolutely gorgeous this sunday morning was absolutely you know it was raining there was this wet warm feel and people were just walking around Sunday morning is so, so calm. I think my advice would be that I've taken from this would be if you're booking a trip, uh, take Monday off. Take Monday off and stay here, go out on Saturday night, feel the vibe of what's going on and then Sunday morning or early afternoon go for a walk, get some brunch, get some lunch and um, yeah because that's a completely different vibe and you there's so many different people walking around and uh, yeah, all right, Poland, Krakow, absolutely. So I think that'll about do it for Krakow. And so tomorrow the Austrian gang are heading back home and me and Jakub are going to go to Posada Zajinska or Zajinski. Again, I'll put it more accurately down here. So we're going to go to a village. We're going to meet his parents. They're going to cook for us. We're going to see rural Polish life in the east, close to the Ukrainian border. So until next time, goodbye. No, thank you, Krakow. Like, comment, Wait, is it, is it subscribe and share, everybody. <laughs> Like, Trolls yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to comment. <laughs> Ring the bell button. Blah. Like, subscribe, Not share. Everybody. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe, my friends. <laughs> you motherfucker.